Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Modern Dog Training. This is the first video in our series on therapy dogs. I get a lot of inquiries throughout the year from people who want to be therapy dog handlers for their own dogs. And I figured this would be a good opportunity to reach out to my fellow colleagues who have trained therapy dogs to give you the information that you need. Our first interview in this series is with the wonderful Kelly St. Marie, who has been training and working with dogs professionally for over 20 years. She's not only trained her own dogs to be therapy dogs, but she is a certified therapy dog evaluator, so she is also training other people to have their dogs become therapy dogs. A lot of great insights, so if you've ever been wondering, what does it take for my dog to become a therapy dog, this is a great interview to watch. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and pass this information on to somebody who might need it. How long have you been working with dogs? About 25 years, about 18 professionally. Um, I started out volunteering at my local Humane Society as a dog walker. And from there, I went to a dog walker to kennel manager, board member, and adoption counselor, and then president for many years. And they actually paid for me to go through Penn Foster and take their dog training certification course. It is online. I had to get my own mentor trainers and do modules and videos and um, to send to them and testing. And my mentor trainer was a graduate from the Animal Behavior College. Okay. So, and I am a firm believer in positive reward motivation training. And I stand on that platform every day of my life. Amen. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Um, and so how did you find your way into working with um, therapy dogs? My St. Bernard Pyrenees mix, Miss Beasley. She was such a wonderful dog. She was so calm, gentle, quiet. Um, so I took her through basic manners class with my mentor trainer. And then I took her through the AKC CGC class and got her certified with her canine good citizen. And from there, we started visiting libraries, elementary schools, nursing homes, hospitals. And it was such a pleasure to see these people who were sitting in these places, really wanting to connect with dogs, nursing homes, they had to leave their dogs behind, hospitals, people didn't feel well. And who doesn't feel better when they have a dog come visit them? So I started doing that. And then I work for Calvert Dog Training, which okay. is a dog training company. It's very small. It's myself, the owner, Elizabeth Ashley, and my colleagues and co-workers, Madison and Dee. Um, so we are a small-based company. We are absolutely all positive and reward-based training. We signed up and got a all-volunteer 501C called WAG Workshops. And what we did is we started doing dog training classes through WAG Workshops. And they were low pay or it was pay what you can, basically, or free if you couldn't afford it. Because we really wanted people in this area to have the ability to get their dog trained in a humane way. And where I'm located in Southern Maryland, there aren't a lot of training companies that use that method. So he wanted to get that out there as much as possible. I wanted to certify my dog, Stubby, who was a Basset Hound Dachshund mix because he loved people. He had a great demeanor. He was already certified for his CGC, Canine Good Citizen. And I trained him and he was certified with his first amateur trick train certificate from the AKC trick trainer. Why not get him certified? So the Alliance of Therapy Dogs is who I work with. I am actually a certified and approved tester and observer for them. And that's who my dogs are certified with. So Stubby did that work for a couple years and then he passed away in October of last year. So I just recently, last year after that, I got my dog, Walter, who is a Basset Hound. He is seven. I got him certified through them as well. So now he goes and he does the work that Stubby did. Um, so with the Alliance, the Alliance of Therapy Dogs, um, they're a wonderful group. They're all volunteer based. Everything I do is volunteer, including all the testing that I do and the 
training that I do for the therapy dogs. There is no certification training that is required for the therapy dogs, but I recommend it to at least have basic manner training. I prefer a group setting for that because then your dog is getting socialized with multiple people, multiple dogs in the area. So if you are going into a facility, your dog is already used to being around a lot of people, being around other dogs, just in case there is another dog in the facility doing a visit at the same time. That is something that I always recommend. We recently, through our WAG workshops, did some therapy dog preparation classes, what we called it. And in this class, we did setups where it looked like elevators going in and out of elevators, using walkers, using wheelchairs, using canes, having them approach people that were in a sitting position, a lying down position. So all of those things. So it was a prep. And then once they graduated from that class, I tested the people that wanted to be tested and become certified therapy dogs. Nice. So what does it take for dogs to pass certification? So basically what you're looking for is a dog that is calm, isn't real barky, jumpy. There's no jumping all over people. Obviously no aggression. If your dog growls, snaps, any aggression at all, the dog is immediately failed. And that dog has to wait to be tested again. If I feel as a tester observer, if I feel this dog was nervous or if the dog had a little bit of was fearful then I tell them why don't we work on this what this dog has going on and see if we can do some behavior modification to turn the dog around if I feel this is a dog that is absolutely not a candidate for it I explain that to the client say hey your dog is lovely you love your dog and you really want to do this but this dog really is not a candidate for a therapy dog to go into a therapy dog situation because you want to have your dog be able to approach somebody calmly and quietly walk by your side inside a building go in and out of an elevator go to the back and sit and wait for you wait at doorways um, to be allowed to go in when they approach we want to make sure they're not jumping on people they're calm small dogs can be put in a stroller or they can be lifted up for petting Um, You have to make sure that um, head is controlled at all times, no face-to-face, no licking. So if you have a dog that really likes to lick people, that's something that we have to kind of work on. Okay, this is not really what we're looking for. Even though your dog's licking all over somebody, that's not a good thing. So luckily with both of my dogs, um, Walter and Stubby, they weren't lickers, um, So it's basically, you're looking for a well-mannered, calm dog, friendly and well socialized with people and is okay with people touching their ears, rubbing their heads, touching their chest. So one of the things that is required in the um, test that I give and observations is the first thing I do is the handling test, which is similar to any handling test when somebody's doing Um, checking a dog and and seeing what their personality is. Basically, it's stroking the head, stroking the ears, rubbing down the legs, touching the feet, lifting the paw, touching the tail. Every part of the dog is touched and stroked because that's what's going to happen when you go into a facility. People are going to touch your dog. So you have to make sure that your dog is used to that and is okay with that. The client isn't aware of those signs and signals of stressors in dogs like, okay, I touched your dog on its head and it stiffened, it closed its mouth, its ears went back, any of those. I point that out and say, okay, this means this dog is not accepting of what we're doing. And we can work on that to see if the dog does become better, do some behavior modification. So it's pretty much just any dog can be a therapy dog if they have the right personality for it. Now, what about the people? Because as we know, right, you can train dogs yourself as a trainer and then the people have to pick up their skill sets and they have to implement it. And I often remind people, I say, if you want your dog to be a therapy dog, that's great. Even if your dog is able to do it, are you going to be able to do it in those environments? Like you said, here comes a wheelchair. They dropped a medical tray. There's loudspeakers and there's maybe yes. your kids. You know, are you as a 
dog trainer, even though you're just training your own dog, are you going to be able to handle that? So what are those challenges like? I'm sure that must come up quite a bit. So we do three, are required to do three observations. Observations is where we actually take the dog in question and we go to a facility and we work at the facility and I see, okay, how are they handling the dog? Are they doing it correctly? Do they need some guidance? Is the dog okay? Is the handler okay? If they need, and there's um, several boxes that have to be checked off. Um, is the dog accepting of this? Is the dog walking on a leash? Do they have the proper leash, the proper harness, the proper collar? And then you check them all off and then you pass each section. If any of the sections are a fail, then we discuss with them, okay, you weren't keeping your dog by your side or you dropped the leash. We need to work on that. And then we can require a fourth observation if we're just not quite sure they have it all together. And then they have you have to go through a testing and filling out paperwork through the Alliance of Therapy for Dogs. They're very thorough. They're very nice. They're all volunteers, but they're very thorough because when you become certified as a therapy dog handler and your dog is a certified therapy dog, you are covered under their insurance. So if you go somewhere and an accident happens, say your dog knocks something over or there's a nip, you know, they might scratch somebody sure. or somebody is scared and gets hurt. Anything that happens in the facility, you are covered under their insurance. So you're not liable for that. You don't have to worry about being sued yourself, but you are covered under their insurance. So they make sure that you have passed everything. What are some of the misconceptions that people have when they come to you? Because I, I get um, you know a fair number of people throughout the year who are like, I want my dog to become a therapy dog. Do you do that certification? And I always say, I don't. Um, one of the things that I remind people of and- maybe you can help uh, back this up is that you want to wait till your dog is three or four, maybe even five. Like you want some mileage. So, you know, the dog you have, because a lot of people come to me with a one-year-old dog and they're like, he would make a great therapy dog. And I'm like, well, he might, but you know, he's pretty crazy at one, you know, he's a great dog, but he's, right. you know, and then I explain to them, like you said, like there's a lot of environmental variables that you have to consider. And that's when they usually start to rethink. So what are some of the misconceptions that people have when they come to you? So with um, the Alliance of Therapy Dog, actually the dog has to be at least one years old. Okay. And they do recommend at least one year old. If the dog is hyper and still crazy, as you know, goldens are puppies until they're three or four. Nice. They're so excited. They're like, woo. They want their dog to be a therapy dog because they think it's a wonderful thing. And it is. And they want to be a part of that. They think their dog is oh, my dog can do this, but their dog is excitable. It's barky. It's jumpy. It's young. It's not been socialized. It's had no training at all. And it may be a lovely, friendly dog, but just because a dog is friendly does not mean it can go do the job of a therapy dog because it is a job and it is work. And they have to be able to do um, certain things to be able to perform that job well. And safely. And that's the biggest thing is it's a safety issue. If you have a dog running around in there, jumping around, knocking things over, scratching people, barking, putting their mouths on people. A lot of people, the misconception is because my dog is friendly and likes people, my dog can be a therapy dog. It has to be able to do the work. It is a job that your dog is doing and you have to be able to do that job as well with your dog. Yeah, I'm sure that there's a lot of people who are disappointed in their dog might be really good, but they're not right. so good. And then they have to realize like, okay, well, yeah, while my dog might be able to pass this test, can I pass it? Can you explain the difference between um, a therapy dog and a service dog? Because sometimes people get those two confused. Yes, all the time. So a therapy dog is a dog that is a well-mannered dog has been worked with, has basic manners, is job is to bring joy to people, to be touched, to be petted, to be visits. When I have my therapy dog out, people say, can I touch your dog? I said, yes, he's a therapy dog. And that's why he always displays his therapy dog vest. And I explained to them, this is his job is for him to go to people or people to come to him and pet him and get joy of doing that. That's what his job is. A service dog has been trained to do a particular service or several services for somebody who has a need for that service. 
but they're trained to do things for people who cannot do those things for themselves or need help alerting, hey, I'm going to faint now, my blood sugar is low, or I'm going to have a seizure. They are trained professionally to do those things for people, not emotional support because you want your dog with you or you, you know, don't want your, you want to have your dog in your apartment. That's not a service dog. Service dogs are trained to do a job. And when you see a service dog, you should never approach them never touch them, never ask the people, can I touch your dog? Because this dog needs to pay attention to its owner at all times, because that could be a cost of a life if you distract that dog. And I would imagine, you know, a good way to look at it would be a dog who is helping the blind is a service dog. And a dog who is a therapy dog is going and visiting people who may have some maladies or some, you know, some trouble that right. you know they're, they're trying to get through and the dog is going to help them feel good for that day. And yes. you know, I think a lot of people get those confused sometimes. What would be your advice for people that are interested in making their dog a therapy dog? I would seek out some training first. And by training, I mean positive reward-based training only. So I always recommend start there with something simple, something not expensive for you and see how your dog does. Is your dog okay in class? Is your dog doing well in class? Is your dog enjoying being around all those other people? And if so, then, you know, pursue it a little more. Do a lot of your research. Um, The Alliance of Therapy Dogs, they have a fabulous website. They have everything on there you need to know about what your dog needs to do, all the paperwork, the handbook, everything is there. So you can say, oh, my dog needs to be able to do this, have this kind of personality. If your dog doesn't, then just enjoy your dog. Just because your dog can't be a therapy dog when you want them to be, doesn't mean you're a failure, doesn't mean your dog's a failure. Some dogs are just, they're your pets, they're your family members, you love them and they're great, and that's okay. So with the Alliance of Therapy Dogs, they are international. They um, are based in, I think it's Wyoming. There's really a great need for therapy dogs everywhere. So I encourage people, if you think your dog is qualified, seek that out. 